Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, in future lessons upcoming, we are going to be using curly braces to do some funky stuff with the contents of variables. So today, I thought we'd go over the basic function of the curly brace, which is to clarify variable names. Now, just to review, Variable names have letters, numbers, and underscores, and they cannot start with numbers. At least the ones that we create cannot start with numbers. So here is an example of a variable. It's called my pet, and we assigned the word rock to it. Now, if we want to print, I have one rock, we simply take and do dollar sign substitution with the variable, and we can put a period at the end. Now, how does corn shell know that this is the variable we're talking about? Well, when corn shell sees a dollar sign, what it says is, you know what? I have a variable name after this. And variable names can have letters, numbers, and underscores. So I am going to assume that anything that is a letter, a number, or an underscore is part of the variable name. So I'm going to look for something that is not one of those three. So in this case, this first print statement, corn shell knows that everything up to that period is part of the variable name. So now that it's figured out that this is the variable name, it looks at the contents of my pet and plops them down right there. Now say we wanted to print that you have two rocks. So in other words, we're trying to say that I want to print the contents of my pet and add an S at the end. Well, following our logic, we have that corn shell sees the dollar sign. It says, OK, I know that a variable name is upcoming. And I know that the variable name is going to have letters, numbers, and underscores. So I'm going to look for something that is not one of those three. Well, the first thing it encounters that is not one of those three is the period. So corn shell thinks that it is looking for a variable called my pets. It doesn't realize that you want to print out the contents of the variable my pet and add an s to it. Now, because up above we did not define a variable called my pets, this substitution right here is going to yield nothing. And then it will print a period. So let's run the program and just look at these first two lines of output. They should be, I have one rock, period. And the second line should be, I have two. This is nothing, so nothing's going to print out. But then it will print out the period. Our program name is called using braces.ksh. When we run it, our first two lines are this. So the first one was the dollar my pet, and corn shell knew that rock was assigned to my pet, so it did the substitution and then printed a period. Now, the second print statement had my pet with an S at the end because we wanted to print the word rocks. However, corn shell said, you know what? I think that you want the variable my pets with an S. And you haven't defined that, so I can't print anything. So it skipped printing that because there was nothing in there and just printed a period afterward, which was what was next after that variable. So how do you print out the contents of my pet and then print a letter S immediately after it? Well, corn shell allows you to do this right here. This says, hey, 
normally when you see a dollar sign you're going to think that anything that is a letter, a number, or an underscore is part of the variable name. But I am explicitly going to tell you what the variable name is. It is what is in between the two curly braces. So in this case, what gets printed out is I have two. Corn shell sees this and says, you know what? I'm just looking for the contents of my pet, which is the word rock. So it substitutes rock right here. And then it prints the S in the period, as you can see from this third line of output.